Hello, did you ever have one of those happy coincidental accidents that tended to solve a slightly related problem? A few weeks ago, I decided I would carry out a task to help a fellow YouTube creator, Wade's Underworld. I think it was about a month ago I was watching one of his videos, and in it he lamented the fact that he could not see the northern celestial pole and that he could not see Polaris. So I decided I was going to make a time-lapse video for him and make it available to him in case he wanted to make a video of his own comparing the northern celestial pole against the southern celestial pole. And here is where the happy coincidental accident occurred. I have a couple of digital cameras. Right now the camera that I have that I like the most is the Nikon D90. It's a slightly older model and it has some limitations. I did also get a P1000 mainly to do flat earth related projects and it certainly was not for its optical characteristics that I got the camera although it is very good at zooming in although that also has trade-offs. But I did end up using the P1000 mainly for its interval timer setting. And the accident involved the way that the cameras behave. My setting of choice on that camera involves very minimal thought to get a reasonable image. And so what I've done is I've set the camera up to give priority first on the aperture, which I control. Then it chooses the ISO setting based on the aperture and the lighting and it also adjusts the shutter speed. And if I were to take a shot 20 minutes before sunset, I don't want the thing to choose a 1 4,000th of a second shutter speed with an ISO of 1200. So there's a setting that loosely couples the shutter speed and the ISO setting. If the shutter needs to remain open for more than the preset value of 1 60th or 1 1 25th of a second rather than risk creating a blurry image it will start to adjust the ISO setting and then finally when the ISO setting is maxed out then it will change the shutter speed again to remain open longer than 1 60th or 1 1 25th of a second. So in reality aperture would be the first priority then ISO would be the second priority and then finally would be the shutter speed. That gave me the best combination that worked in the most situations that I found myself in. If let's say on a nice bright sunny day I happen to walk into a wooded area and I want to take a picture of a rock or take a picture of a snail on a log for example, I don't have to worry about setting the tripod up to maintain a sharp image with an ISO of 100 when I would have to have it at a quarter of a second. So it would automatically adjust the ISO setting to maintain a shutter speed fast enough that I could still hand hold the camera even in a situation like that. And then I could of course change the settings if I really wanted to and really get that perfect shot but for most of the images that I've taken you only start to see the graininess or the pixelation effect at dusk or shortly after the sun has set. So I had applied that setting to the P1000 when I got the P1000. Everything seemed to work reasonably well. I did take time-lapse videos facing east by pointing the camera out of my window at night and it did seem to be reasonably well illuminated but I did have street lights and other things like that. So on this evening when I set the camera up and I pointed it to the sky, the first image was shortly after sunset and I did look through the viewfinder to see if it was reasonably well framed and well exposed and it did seem to look properly exposed. So I went into the house and I waited a few hours. After I had taken the time lapse and I reviewed the rest of the evening's footage, 
after the few clouds had disappeared, I noticed that there really wasn't much to look at and I couldn't see the stars at all. So now I was faced with the possibility of deleting this and trying it again another night or maybe to try to recover some of the images to see if I could create a reasonable time lapse out of it. And one of the first obvious solutions would be to take one of these images and to play with the settings in something like GIMP. And that's exactly what I did. So I went and I looked at the hue, the saturation, the saturation, the exposure, the shadows, highlights. I tried uh, adjusting, stretching the contrast, stretching the, the HSV. I tried equalizing. I tried a whole bunch of settings and I found the simplest in this case that worked was brightness and contrast. And if I adjust the brightness alone, it doesn't really appear to do much of anything. If I try to adjust the contrast, Again, that doesn't seem to help. And I found what really helped in this case was not only to crank the brightness up almost all the way, but to crank the contrast up almost all the way as well. And I was able to pick up several stars. So the next trick after that was rather than try to do this one by one manually, for over 200 images. The solution was to use the Image Magic suite of tools available. And I think it was the convert utility in this package of tools and to create a script that batch processed all of the images. I'm going to include that at the end of this video, but I did make the video available to Wade as well in case he wanted to make one of his own videos that compare the northern and cele southern celestial poles. But after this happy coincidence, I decided I was going to see if I could apply that to the problem that I had with the north facing camera. I explained how it seems like it's not properly sealed and when it would rain moisture would condense on the lens and it would also condense on the electronics that happen to be nearby and that is what fried the infrared transmitter board about a month after I had set it up. I'm going to make another video talking about that and how I more or less repaired it. But for now, I'm going to talk about how I used the trick of using brightness and contrast to fix these images. In my app that I'm developing, I found the method required to have it automatically apply a brightness and contrast control when I go to render the image on the screen or to save it to a file. And these numbers are relatively arbitrary, but they are the values that are fed directly into that module. And I just set an arbitrary limit of 50 and 10 for each of those. I've got it set up so that I can change the brightness and in a similar way to GIMP, you can't really see much of anything with the brightness. And if I change the contrast again in a very similar way, you can kind of see something. But the two in combination tend to be where the magic really happens. And so I was reviewing the various nights overcast with full cloud cover and other nights without any clouds. And for this time, I found that the best setting was a brightness level of 10 and a contrast level of about 4. And you can see Polaris jumps out a lot better now. And I can also see a fair number of other stars much more clearly. So here's Kokab and that that spot where you see that purple color. I'm going to be talking about that in the next video where I talk about fixing the infrared transmitter. But thanks to a happy accident with a misconfigured camera, I was able to use that to go back and find a way to automatically adjust the settings of the north facing camera.
so that I could start using the North camera as more proof of a spherical Earth rotating within a star field and how the star field shifting its position over the course of the year also proves that the Earth rotates around the sun and that it is not just some magical light that seems to be coming from above our heads. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching. Once again, I would appreciate the thumbs up and all the other good YouTube stuff. I'll see you again in another video soon enough. Bye for now.